I hope the screen is uh, visible. Uh, yes, it's visible. So, so should I start or should we wait for some time? No, you can start. Most of the people are there. Thank you, Amita Madam and Janita Madam, for inviting me to give this uh, talk on plagiarism. Copyright. What is plagiarism and how it is different to violation of copyright? What are the different types of plagiarism? Is plagiarism the same as similarity? What are the consequences if plagiarism is detected? How to avoid plagiarism before we finally conclude? So to start with, I would just uh, like to reiterate the concept why plagiarism is so important in the Indian context. Generally, right from the time we were in school, right up to the time we finished our graduation, post-graduation and everything, uh, we However, when you previously published scientific literature. Intellectual property rights in matters. Durga, we are having problem with connectivity. We are not able to hear property you. Property rights mean? Your uh, signal is getting cut in between your voice. Uh, am I audible? Now you're audible, but in between your voice is getting cut many times. Stable. Yeah, just please let me know if the connection is unstable. I'll change to a different connection. So basically when uh, we create some content, we have intellectual property rights over that. That content could uh, creation like a machine. That content could be something like a software. So it is important to preserve these intellectual property rights in matters related to copyright. So it is important for prospective authors to understand the principles of copyright preservation to safeguard against inadvertent violations of the same which have moral, ethical, as well as legal consequences, as well as to preserve the intellectual property rights related to their own work. So how are scientific journals published? There are broadly two categories of scientific journals, one that are published open access and one that are published in a subscription-based model. So in a subscription-based model, you have to pay to subscribe to the content. You have to pay to view the content. Whereas in an open access, it can be accessible immediately without any article processing charges, which is called as platinum open access or immediately available open access or freely accessible with article processing charges levied to the authors. These are gold open access or green open access, wherein the content is published as a subscription content, but the accepted version is able to be freely distributed after a certain embargo period, say six months or one year. So copyright for published content may rest. In, in our case, we are mostly dealing with copyright for published literature. This may rest with the authors if the content has been published as open access or with the journals or with the publishers. So how do we know with whom the copyright rests? So you need to search for this copyright sign on the manuscript. This was one article where it was published in an open access journal and you can see that copyright rests with the authors. Whereas this was another article published in a subscription journal. Here the copyright rests with the publisher that is Springer, Verlag, Berlin, Heidelberg. So 
after identifying with whom the copyright rests if one wants to reproduce the content from such a paper then you need to seek the permission of the copyright holder if it has been published as subscription cite the reference properly and mention that you are reproducing the content from this paper published as open access so whenever you are reproducing text such as in double quotes I, i think this question was raised in the last talk as to uh, somebody queried whether uh, when you are uh, uh, writing a manuscript about a particular invention and you are again writing something to update that previous information how do you do that appropriately you can simply use double quotes to reproduce the text that you have previously done as well as provide a reference then it will not be plagiarism if you are reproducing figures and tables then you need to duly attribute the source and of course if you need to seek permission from the copyright holder you also do need to do that it is always best to seek written permission of the copyright holder even if it is your own article that has the index content that you are reproducing as an example this was a review that we wrote a few years back on a disease called as takayasu arthritis wherein we summarized the effect of different drugs on various different outcomes a few years down the line when we wrote another paper we wanted to use a sim despite the fact that the first article had been written by us we still had to seek permission of the journal of the publisher because we had transferred copyright to the publisher so here you can see partly adapted with permission and i have given reference to the original source so even if it's your own content you need to seek permission of the copyright holder which in this case was the publisher where the journal uh, article had been previously published if it is published open access then you reproduce with clear attribution to source and it's always if the authors are holding the copyright it's better to write them an email and seek their permission if the journal publisher holds the copyright then another recent article in a journal called as clinical rheumatology so if uh, ba basically on the web page of the article if you go down if you scroll down there is something called as uh, called as rights link this is the common platform used by many different publishers for seeking permission for of what you want to do you want to reuse in a medical communications project reuse in a clinical trial post on a website reuse in news media make photocopies or whatever and appropriately you can seek the permission generally if it is permission being sought for non commercial reproduction such as for academic purposes the journals do not charge you money for that but they may still charge you and if you are reproducing content you do need to pay that money before you can actually reproduce that content so that you are on the right side of the law now violations of copyright can result in different things such as plagiarism duplicate publication redundant publications or salami slicing so when you are reproducing content verbatim from a or part or whole of the content from a particular manuscript you are reproducing it verbatim without duly attributing the source of it that is called as plagiarism whereas if you are directly reproducing the content that was previously published it is called as a duplicate publication there are some collaborative publications at society level that can be simultaneously published in two different journals for example diagnostic criteria or classification criteria or treatment recommendations as an example uh, in our field we have a disease called as rheumatoid arthritis so the 2010 rheumatoid arthritis classification criteria were published simultaneously in two different journals arthritis and rheumatism and annals of the rheumatic diseases so this is acceptable because the authors would have 
mention to the editors of the journals that we are simultaneously publishing these criteria in two different journals. So acceptable secondary publication is when the authors have received approval from editors of both journals. The editor concerned with secondary publication must have access to the primary version. The priority of the primary publication is respected by a publication interval negotiated by both editors with the authors. The paper for secondary publication is intended for a different group of readers. For example, an article could have been published, say, in Polish language, but the same article may now be published in an English language as long as you clearly mention that it was initially published in a Polish language and now is being published in an English language journal and the editor is ready to accept that. The secondary version should faithfully reflect the data and interpretations of the primary version. The secondary version should inform readers, peers and documenting agencies that the paper has been published in whole or in part elsewhere. For example, you put this kind of a statement like this article is based on a study first reported in so and so journal with the full reference and the secondary version cites the primary reference or the title of the secondary publication should indicate that it is a secondary publication, a complete or abridged republication or translation of a primary publication. So these are situations when a secondary publication is acceptable. Redundant publications are, let's say, a particular study has looked at the effect of amlodipine in hypertension in 20 patients and 20 controls. And they have found that amlodipine reduces blood pressure when compared to controls. You conduct another study where you are taking 25 patients and 25 controls. And you are essentially having the same findings. This is called as a redundant publication. Although it's a separate study, you are essentially using the same methods, reproducing the same methods, pro providing similar results. So again, this is journals very often do not like redundant publication and more often than not, it would be rejected. And if later on detected, then it may even be retracted. What is salami slicing? Salami slicing is, let's say a manuscript has seven different components you could very well publish all of them together under the same manuscript. However, you choose to publish them under seven different manuscripts because you want to increase your number of publications. This is called as salami slicing. This is an extreme example of a salami publication wherein a survey of mental health status among adults aged 15 and above in 33 provinces of Iran, one paper was published for each province. So very well, the authors could have, say, published four or five papers based on the regions that these uh, surveys were conducted, or even published it as one single paper in 33 provinces of Iran and provided the data for each of these provinces. But they have chosen to split it into 33 different publications, almost with the same author list, with some permutations and combinations. So this is an example of a salami publication. Again. This is another publication wherein almost similar results have been described in two different uh, papers and there is significant overlap in the text of this paper. So again, these are uh, salami publications and should be avoided. When is splitting a study into different parts acceptable? When these look at different aspects of a study mostly unrelated to each other. For example, you have a cohort of patients with rheumatoid arthritis. The patients are recruited from the same population, but for different studies. For example, to study clinical risk factors for poor disease outcomes, to evaluate a biomarker for disease activity, to evaluate gene expression signature in the peripheral blood. It doesn't make sense to copy and put all these studies together. It is very right if you choose to publish them each as different studies. So again, coming back to what we had seen, how a manuscript can be published as a plagiarized version, as a duplicate version, as a redundant version, and as salami slicing. What are the differences between plagiarism and copyright infringement? Plagiarism is an ethical construct, whereas copyright is a legal construct. The interpretation of plagiarism is more abstract. It is difficult to set exact boundaries that say this percentage constitutes plagiarism and this doesn't constitute plagiarism. 
whereas the copyright regulation varies from country to country as per local law plagiarism is an offense against the author whereas copyright infringement is an offense against the copyright owner copying ideas is considered plagiarism but it is not considered as copyright infringement if a different set of expressions words or a different written plan evolved from that idea has been used to denote the information how to avoid plagiarism by giving due credit that is quoting or citing the material how to avoid copyright infringement by obtaining permission from the copyright holder and this may require financial compensation if you remember that article that we had seen how to go to the rights link and seek permission the copyright holder might ask you to pay a certain amount if you want to reproduce that information and if you go ahead and want to reproduce that information you would have to pay that amount of money for plagiarism that do not exist time limits whereas copyright have fixed time duration as determined by local law so very often nowadays social media channels are used in academic circles what are the rules for posting copyrighted content on social media channels the same rules apply as for reproducing any other material that is you must duly attribute the source of the material that you are reproducing now more detail about plagiarism plagiarism is an act of misappropriation of others intellectual property and this is including but not limited to scholarly texts research methods graphics and ideas failure to obtain permission to reproduce previously published material and to acknowledge primary sources are the main components of the misappropriation so to avoid plagiarism it is best to try best try not to reproduce previously published material unless it is absolutely essential to do so and if at all you are reproducing the previously published material you must acknowledge the primary source of the material so as we have seen if a part or a whole of a manuscript is reproduced without citing the source of the manuscript then this constitutes plagiarism what are the various types of plagiarism for example you can have a sentence the mouse ran up the clock it is acceptable to rephrase this you see this expression as mentioned in the popular nursery rhyme the mouse climbed up the clock this is acceptable direct plagiarism would be simply reproducing this content a patchwork plagiarism is in an attempt to hide this direct plagiarism you are adding that the mouse ran up the clock and we watched it go in the hope that somebody is not going to pick up the plagiarism find and replace plagiarism you are using the a uh, genus and the species for mouse and instead of clock you are using chronometer mosaic plagiarism you are again mixing it with another source you are plagiarizing this part of the sentence alice went down the rabbit hole and the first part of the sentence you have taken from this so again an attempt to subvert the detection of plagiarism a 404 error plagiarism what is a 404 error when we go to a web page which is not available then this is called as 404 error so here you mention that as mentioned in romeo and juliet the mouse ran up the clock whereas this was not mentioned in romeo and juliet you have simply given a spurious uh, reference so this is a misquoted or missing source so these are different examples of how a simple sentence can be plagiarized then what are the different types of plagiarism one is the plagiarism of ideas plagiarism of ideas is something which is technically difficult to detect you may be able to detect it if for example if a review article has been plagiarized by somebody else then the references in that review article and in the article that has plagiarized it may have a uh, same order so that's how you can identify that probably this review article was plagiarized from somebody else hypothesis might have been discussed in person with somebody and they go ahead and translate that hypothesis before you have had a chance to translate it and claim it as their own so this could be a plagiarism of ideas direct verbatim copying as we have seen the most common cause is inexperienced authors who are unaware of what is plagiarism and copy texts with or without references paraphrasing is when authors copy text passages with or without referencing replace a few words here and there in between so that the similarity checking software cannot detect 
that this has been plagiarized. Text recycling is when authors or copyright holders without seeking due permission reproduce their own intellectual property that they have actually signed over the copyright to while publishing it in a particular journal. Then this is called as text recycling. Translational plagiarism is say something, something has been published in Polish language. Now you are publishing it in English language without attributing that the primary source was the Polish language article. That is translational plagiarism. Plagiarism of graphics is you have taken a figure or an image or a cartoon to denote some pathways. You have taken it from a source and you don't say that you have taken it from the source. You have simply produced it in your paper. This can be sometimes very difficult to detect. We shall see how one can identify that as well. Plagiarism with citation manipulation. Sometimes if you have the same citation list as in a review article when you are copying the or producing the similar content in another review article, the reference list would be the same. But to subvert the detection, what you are doing is you are simply changing some references here and there so that you are concealing the plagiarism. And compound plagiarism is when you combine various of these aspects in an attempt to subvert the similarity checking software. So is plagiarism the same as similarity? Similarity is the degree of similarity between a given piece of text and the previously published literature. Uh, how do you detect similarity? Using softwares like commonly using softwares like Authenticate or Turnitin, Whenever you submit to a journal, most journals would run a similarity check through Authenticate or through Turnitin. However, this costs money. And at institute level also, it is feasible. Many institutions like All India Institute, KGMU have subscription to Authenticate or Turnitin. Unfortunately, we don't have that. But institute can subscribe to these softwares and provide you the facility of using them to check your paper, whether you have inadvertently, by mistake, reproduced something verbatim, which you should not have done. There are free sites as well, such as small CO tools, Dupli Checker, but these are less powerful. What determines how powerful a similarity checking software is? It depends on the database that the software has access to to compare while assessing similarity. Why are Authenticate and Turnitin so powerful? Because they have a massive database to compare similarity. Every day, these software crawl through millions of web pages and archive them into their database. So even content, which is no more available on the internet, is still available for comparison. You may have plagiarized something from a web page that was there a couple of years back, but is, when you look for it, it's no more there now and you think that the similarity checking software is not going to flag this. But actually these Authenticate and Turnitin go through millions of web pages, storing them into their database so that even if a content is not available and you have plagiarized it, then also it can be identified. This is particularly relevant with respect to predatory journals. I think in the previous talk, you had a discussion about predatory journals. So these predatory journals, what they do is, they won't provide you a good service of uh, editing or reviewing. They will accept your article and ask you money for publishing it. Let's say you are not wanting to pay that money. You identify at that stage that you have been trapped. Then you want to withdraw that article. What they do is they simply go and post it online and then say that a withdrawal fee will be charged. So you pay that withdrawal fee and thereafter your article is withdrawn and no more available on the internet. Now, having realized your folly, you now go to a genuine journal and try to publish your article. However, it will be still flagged as similar because that content which is not available at this moment has been uh, databased on Authenticate or Turnitin and is still detected that it was previously published. So these are the various different softwares to check similarity. As we can see, Authenticate or Turnitin and Grammarly is another software which is useful for editing grammar of uh, articles. It is particularly useful for us authors from countries like India where our native 
language is not english uh, a lot of the grammar checking functions are free but the plagiarism checking function is paid again institutes can have subscription to this but we don't have that uh, there are various other softwares also that are available and these are not very powerful that is the issue with the freely available softwares so again differentiating between plagiarism and similarity so plagiarism is duplication of content without really attributing the source whereas similarity is similarity of a manuscript to other published literature web pages or grey literature plagiarism is quite difficult to identify at times particularly when it involves plagiarized figures plagiarized tables or plagiarized ideas whereas similarity can be easily detected using the similarity checking software the gold standard of plagiarism is the source from which the plagiarism has occurred whereas similarity depends on the breadth of the coverage of the similarity checking software as we have seen authenticate and turnitin have an extensive breadth of coverage but freely available softwares do not have that the judgment of plagiarism is subjective based on the authors and reviewers assessment of plagiarism even if you have copied one or two lines from a previous manuscript that can be considered as plagiarism because you are not allowed to copy any content even if it is less than 5% or if it even if it is less than 10% but similarity you can have these different distinctions for example similar up to 10% 10 to 40% and all these different distinctions can be there for similarity but a judgment of plagiarism is often subjective and copying any content even a single sentence from a previously published paper without duly attributing the source can be considered as plagiarism the threshold for action is based on the editorial policies driven by peer reviewers and editors whereas the threshold of action based on similarity is arbitrary based on the cutoffs that a journal may determine say for example if an article is 20% similar they may say that we will not accept it we will outright reject it what are the consequences of plagiarism if it is judged to be minor the content may be corrected by authors either before publication if it is identified during the peer review process or it could be subject to an erratum or partial retraction after publication if it is judged to be significant the manuscript might be rejected before publication or retracted if it has already been published and the author's host institution may need to be informed by the journal regarding the plagiarism whereas for similarity similar texts may be flagged up to the authors for revision when the manuscript is undergoing revision or if it is too much similar as per the journal's threshold then the manuscript may well be rejected so how do we identify plagiarism of graphics for example there is something called as a nuclear factor kappa b pathway so if you search google using this nfkb pathway you go to this section called as images once you click on it you have these various different images so let's say somebody has written a review article on nuclear factor kappa b pathway and you are reviewing that article and they have introduced a very beautiful image and you want to see whether it's original or not so you go and search through these google images generally if they would have copied it you would find something very similar and therefore you can identify that this is possibly plagiarism here the software the authenticate or turnitin is not going to give you an input to help you to identify whether an image is plagiarized or not plagiarism of ideas is much more difficult to detect this would rely on a specific complaint for example if i had a hypothesis which i have discussed with xyz and i am working on translating that hypothesis then i find that as i am working on translating it xyz has gone on and published a paper related to that hypothesis now it was my fault that i discussed the hypothesis that i had in my mind it i i really can't blame the other person and i really will need to prove that i it was indeed my hypothesis in the first place so the burden of proof lies with the complainant and it is often quite difficult to prove plagiarism of ideas however if a clear cut uh, proof is presented for example a hypothesis that was published in a previous journal and is now again republished by somebody as original then such papers could be retracted or subject to corrective action 
citing prior conference abstracts in published papers is an important consideration today as residents you would often publish your uh, preliminary findings in conference abstracts later on when you publish your full paper uh, some of that information might be duplicated for example the methods in the abstract that you had presented at the conference or in the abstract of your manuscript the methods might be similar therefore the similarity checking software may flag this up may identify that this is similar to the previously published literature to avoid such unnecessary flagging it is best to state under prior conference presentation that this abstract was presented at so and so conference and this is the online link to the website where this abstract is available so that the editor knows that this has been spuriously flagged and unnecessarily does not think that your paper is similar to that which was previously published what happens if plagiarism is detected the consequences of plagiarism could be either a rewriting of the manuscript if it is detected at the level of peer review or a rewriting of the thesis if it is detected when you are submitting your thesis rejection of the manuscript or rejection of the thesis retraction of copied texts portions of manuscripts or even whole papers could be retracted of course there is public shaming and sometimes institutes may expel plagiarists and the journals or publishers may sometimes impose a temporary or permanent barring from publishing on those that have indulged in plagiarism so the consequences of plagiarism can be quite severe and hence it is important to understand how to avoid falling foul of plagiarism in the indian context as i had mentioned at the beginning that we are taught and rewarded to reproduce verbatim content from textbooks right from primary school and those that reproduce the knowledge verbatim the best get the highest marks however this is not acceptable in scientific publishing any verbatim reproduction of content must be within double quotes while also duly acknowledging the source these two things must be kept in mind if you are verbatim reproducing it should be in double quotes and also the source has to be cited this was an uh, analysis of causes of retracted papers from india uh, from 200, 2010 to 2017 and as you can see of the 46 papers that had been retracted 26 had been retracted due to duplication of text figures or tables without appropriate referencing or duplicate publication both of which could be considered as plagiarism so plagiarism is an important cause of retracted publications from india and therefore one must make the best attempt to avoid falling foul of plagiarism this was an another analysis of retractions in rheumatology available on pubmed up to october 2019 as you can see duplication of text data content plagiarism and copyright issues were responsible for a considerable proportion of retracted papers again just to give the message that if you plagiarize something it can have serious consequences and you try to need to avoid that as much as possible the gazette of india published this uh, recommendation from the university grants commission in july 2018 wherein they have actually delineated what is acceptable and what is unacceptable plagiarism they have recommended the use of similarity checks to exclude plagiarism and the similarity checks should exclude these content any quoted work reproduced with necessary permission or attribution references bibliography table of content preface acknowledgments generic terms laws standard symbols and standard equations they have actually provided these different levels of plagiarism based on similarity up to 10% 10 to 40% 40 to 60% and above 60% however as we have seen similarity is not the same as plagiarism something which is similar less than 10% may yet be plagiarized something which has a similarity of 20% 30% may not have been plagiarized let's say a method section very often it is difficult to use entirely different language to describe the methods that you have used for example there are only limited number of ways you can say that uh, serum samples were run using elisa for 
a b c d e so there may be similarity in that that is not really plagiarism that is not of consequence however if there is considerable similarity in the introduction in the results or in the discussion or the conclusion then it could be unacceptable even if it is less than the limit of 10% so they have recommended these different punishments stating minor similarities up to 10% no penalty 10 to 40% the student shall be asked to submit a revised script within a stipulated period not exceeding 6 months 40 to 60% shall be debarred from submitting a revised script for 1 year above 60% the student registration for the program shall be cancelled and if it is a repeated offence then one level higher penalty is applied and for uh, staff and faculty again they have uh, prescribed these different punishments up to 10% no penalty 10 to 40% asked to withdraw manuscript 40 to 60% withdraw manuscript denied a right to an annual increment and shall not be allowed to supervise any new master student for a period of 2 years and if more than 60% then shall be asked to withdraw the manuscript denied a right to two successive annual increments and not allowed to be a supervisor for a period of 3 years and if it is a repeated offence then a higher level of penalty is applicable however the issue with this is that again as we have seen similarity is not the same as plagiarism and one cannot simply put plagiarism into percentages it has to be a judgment call for example if you have plagiarized a figure then it will come as 0% similarity in the text that still constitutes plagiarism whereas if some sections of the methods are written similar to other papers and let's say even reproduce verbatim in double quotes with due attribution to the source that is not plagiarism therefore the judgment of plagiarism has to be made by the authority who is examining whether plagiarism has occurred or not rather than simply going by percentages so these uh, regulations also mention that institutions should have mechanisms to check for plagiarism or similarity and also to provide appropriate education to students to staff to faculty so that they do not fall foul of plagiarism and also should have a uh designated committee to investigate accusations of plagiarism and suggest appropriate punishments this is a real life example of an authenticate output so here you can see that all these content that are flagged in this uh, colored text is actually what is similar to the previously published literature of this small paragraph you can see how much actually is original most of it has been duplicated from the previously published literature only changing a few words or sentences in between and you see how powerful the software is that even this much can easily be detected by the software so here you see in this paragraph of say 150 words you can see that nearly 80% of the content has actually been reproduced from the different uh, publications that are referenced in this similarity report so again try your best never to reproduce verbatim comments it is always a good idea to try to synthesize the information in your mind yourself then write it up and then again go back and check that by mistake you have not verbatim reproduced the content so again the same example goes on here so how do we avoid plagiarism these are some tips for young authors to avoid falling foul of plagiarism you must habitually reference everything whenever you are stating something say that this is the reference not only in manuscripts but also during your presentations during discussions etc you must say that this is the source that i am quoting and this says that this much is the prevalence of this clinical feature in this disease etc if you have access to a similarity checking or plagiarism checking software you must use it and also must learn to use freely available plagiarism checkers if you have access to no softwares and you you let's say you are writing a manuscript and you are in doubt about a particular segment of the manuscript you are not sure whether yourself or one of the co-authors has 
copied some segments of that from elsewhere then simply put it on google and search for duplicate text put put it line by line on google and you will be able to identify make an idea as to whether this content was reproduced verbatim from elsewhere or not always reproduce figures and tables from elsewhere after seeking permission for reproduction from the copyright holder whenever you are writing a manuscript go back and read each line of the manuscript if necessary going back to the reference paper to see that you have not inadvertently reproduced the content verbatim if you have written a manuscript similar to this before you must definitely go back and read the same so as to avoid inadvertent reproduction of the same phrases or sentences that you have used in the previous manuscript so how can editors and reviewers detect plagiarism in manuscripts analyze outputs from similarity checking software as a screening tool the similarity checking software is only a tool to help you to identify potential instances of plagiarism it is not going to tell you whether plagiarism has occurred or not it is the judgment that has to be made by the reviewer or the editor who has access to the similarity report and also appropriate filter should be used to exclude references and limit the sequence of identity of successive words for example very often a limit of 8 or 10 words is used in the authenticate you can put a limit that if more than 8 words consecutively are similar only then they are to be flagged up because some common phrases some abbreviations when they are expanded these may simply constitute 7 to 8 to 10 words and that is not really similar content because there is no other way of projecting that information so you must use appropriate filter filters to exclude references and limit the sequence of words say 8 or 10 words if it is beyond that only then the software would flag it up as similar again authors may intermittently change words to avoid software based plagiarism detection for example the same limiting the sequence of sequence of identity of successive words the authors may try to manipulate this process they know that you are not going to identify content that is more than similar by eight words as plagiarized so they simply will change every four or every fifth word and try to sub subvert the detection capacity of the similarity checking software so editors and reviewers must be aware that this can happen and this should be detected because if say in a sequence of 40 words every five words you are having a similarity then after that one word you are not having a similarity then it is more likely that it has been copied verbatim from elsewhere while simply changing a word here and there if it's a review article you need to review the reference list of notable review articles and the order of such references this can help you detect plagiarism of ideas check images in articles through google images compare tables in review articles to prior published reviews on the topic seek a disclaimer from authors regarding absence of plagiarism so that later on they can't say that oh we didn't know that we inadvertently did this or make such excuses you ask them to provide a disclaimer that the content that they are providing is original and has not been copied verbatim from elsewhere as we had already discussed prior conference presentations should be clearly mentioned when you are submitting the manuscript so as to unnecessarily avoid these being flagged as similar and if there are abrupt changes in tone of manuscript from one section to elsewhere say a manuscript has five sections four sections have a similar style of writing and a fifth section has a totally different style of writing it is possible that that might have been copied from elsewhere else so just beware abrupt changes in tones of manuscripts this may help you to identify whether something is plagiarized or not some good practices that i have learned from experience when you write something critically go back and read that and if necessary rewrite that so inadvertent plagiarism can be avoided by that avoid reproducing figures or tables even with permission even when you have sought permission and appropriately dealt with the copyright considerations it is best to avoid reproducing figures and tables that are not your own content that have not been previously created by you unless it is absolutely necessary it's better to adapt your own figures rather than directly reproduce figures or tables 
and if it is necessary to reproduce then one must use a different format to the extent so that it can be considered as original let's say you had represented something in the form of a table you now summarize it in the form of a flow chart so you are using a different format to reproduce something that you had previously published as a table in another subsequent publication that you are updating this previous publication you are using a different format to reproduce that so it's best to avoid reproducing figures and tables of others and even your own it's best to adapt them or use a different format so that it can be considered as original so to conclude it is essential to educate younger colleagues about the menace of plagiarism and universities higher education institutions also have a responsibility to establish mechanisms to educate regarding plagiarism and provide students and faculties free access to plagiarism checking software to pre-check manuscripts or thesis before they are submitted questions are most welcome thank you